Welcome to this edition of the Adobe Think Tank. I am Daya Nadamuni with Adobe's Corporate Strategy Team. And here with me today is Theodora Lau, founder of Unconventional Ventures. Welcome, Theo. Thank you. It's good Thanks to for see you. Me. Um, so I know that you have a passion for developing innovative financial services for the underserved populations. Mm -hmm. So, and I know you're looking at uh, ways in which AI could augment the kind of services that you offer to these populations. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us a little more about that? Yeah, definitely. So one of the most intriguing demographic, if you will, um, that a lot of people don't think about other people that are older than 50 years old. Because normally when we think about innovation and technology, we tend to skew a little younger. But if you think about it in the US, there are over 110 million Americans that are aged 50 and above. We're living longer, healthier, and more productive lives. And so if you think about it from a broader perspective, the way we're living, the way we're working, everything is different. So the way we plan our finances and retirement should also be different too, right? We need to think of things in terms of life stage instead of an age, because age doesn't really mean much anymore when we're 50, we're 60. Well, if you take a look around us, they're all living very, very different lives. I know, and now there's movements afoot to live to 120, and that yes. changes the outcomes even more. Exactly. So, now, I, I read somewhere you'd said that it's banks are not competing with each other or other financial services institutions anymore. They're really competing with Apple and Amazon and Google. Can you tell us a little more about that? Yeah, I, I think the biggest change that these big tech companies introduced to us is the customer centricity. If you think about the products they offer, Google, Amazon, Amazon isn't really selling books anymore. Google isn't just doing Gmail, right? They are a much broader ecosystem. At the same time, they're also quote unquote financial services. There is Amazon Pay, there is, you know, Apple Pay. There are all of these things, they're not banks, but they offer services and they delight us in a lot of different ways along the whole customer path. And so if we think about it, consumers aren't looking for banks, they're looking for banking services. So in that sense, why do I need to go to a bank and when I can get similar services from these big tech companies who know me and who know me really well and they treat me well. So you're really thinking about the more personalization journeys that are happening as a result of you know, people's expectations of what their bank institution need to yeah. offer. So um, we know that AI is going to be fairly disruptive mm -hmm. for all of the different industries. Can you speak a little bit to how you see AI being disruptive for the financial services industry? Yeah. You know, in terms of personalization and the customer experience. Yeah, definitely. So one of the things I started seeing, not a whole lot, but some of it, it relates to what I was talking about, looking at things at life stage. Mm -hmm. So let's say um, doing financial planning. Someone can be a millennial looking at, I want to get a home or someone can be a sandwich generation trying to figure out my finances amongst multiple households. I need to plan to save education for my kids. I need to plan for my own retirement. Mm -hmm. And I also need to plan and figure out, can I afford to help my parents, right? And so if you think about all of these different use cases, is data crunching? There's a lot of different sources of data that you need to collate together and make sense out of it. And this is where I think AI and algorithms can do a really, really amazing job. There is a company startup in New York City here that they are looking at it. They're looking at, you know, if I am someone at a particular life stage coming in, can I afford to get my kids to college at this particular zip code, at this particular point in time, and that engine can constantly update itself based on all of the other external data that it has. And it will just tell you, very simple, yes, no, and then what you need to do. And that's how I think it should be, right? I don't need to be an Excel spreadsheet master to try to figure all of these things out. Same with the accumulation, right? We are very used to accumulating well right. as a society. Yeah. All the financial services, all the banks, everyone is thinking about, oh, how can I help you save more? What if we get to a point where we are not saving, but we're trying to figure out how to spend down what we have? How do we plan for, should I plan for 10 years, 15 years? How does my health mm -hmm. impact the way I should plan, right? So they're in a 
lies a very interesting future where AI can do is figure out the intersection of health and wealth and how does it serve me as an individual, not everyone else around me. Great. So what advice do you have for brands and enterprises that have to plan for these new types of services? Can you give us the top three that are on your mind? I think the first and foremost is customer centricity. It's very, very important. It's not so much as, oh, this is this really cool AI box, right? Everyone is talking about it. My shareholders want to know what's going on. My board wants to know what's going on. Let's, let's do something AI, right? That, that never works. You have to figure out where does it fit in what I'm trying to do for my consumers, my customers, internal customers, external customers, consumers. What are the problems I'm trying to solve? And how can I leverage technology as a means to an end to get there? Right? And that, that's foremost is important. And think about how do you get there? You know, do I need to, what kind of um, talent do I need to get? Do I want to develop in-house? Or do I want to go secure somebody? Right? And how does that impact me as a culture? Culture is very important because technology in the end of the day is technology. That's easy. The culture part is the, is the people part, right? That's the hard part. The creativity, how do you harness the creativity? How do you harness the emotional intelligence of people and mix them all together? And that's where you can create magic. So just really think about the customer journey and the entire yeah. customer experience, not just you know pieces of the workflow. Yeah. That's great, Theo. Thank you very much. We've really enjoyed having you on the show. Thank you so and, much. And uh, so we'll be live streaming all day today and tomorrow. Do follow us on uh, Twitter, hashtag AdobeTT. Thank you.